Hello everyone and thank you Michael for the introduction. As I had multiple positions and roles in Finca and being part of the human centric design project, I've had the opportunity to see our operations from uh, various angles. And one reality has consistently stood out uh, is that when we actively listen to our women customers without making assumptions and addressing their unique needs, we not only meet their needs more effectively, but also unlock greater opportunities to reach out to more women customers and tap in new market segments. Given the fact that we are serving less than 1% of adult female population in our countries. It's easy to fall into the trap of believing that our women customers are fully aware of the resources available to them or understand how financial institutions operate. However, this assumption can be misleading, especially when it comes to serving women who in many cases might avoid our services due to fear of rejection, complexity, or misunderstanding. Take, for example, a conversation I had with a potential customer in Jordan. She shared how her strategy to cope with crisis, selling her family assets, left them vulnerable and unable to rebuild. After selling her boats, which were her only assets and source of food, to afford medical treatment. She lacked the capital to restart her business, a situation that made her struggle to bring food on the table for her family. Her story is a powerful reminder that our services need to be not just accessible, but also designed to fit unique circumstances of women's lives. So what do our women customers really need from us? One, a good fit. Provide well-designed products that meet their needs at the right time. Two, trust and support. To reach customers through different channels and help them understand what Finca can offer and how that will benefit them, preventing them from falling into over indebtedness and to provide the education and the needed assistance. Three, cultural sensitivity. We must provide products in a way that sidesteps unnecessary cultural barriers or obligations. So recognizing and addressing the unique financial needs of women not only fulfills a social responsibility, but also positions us strategically for sustainable growth and competitive advantage. With that, I will hand over to Zar who will lead a conversation with Golnuza about work to support women entrepreneurs in Tajikistan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gada, for the insight. And I'm just so grateful that you had the opportunity to uh, participate um, in that uh, research. Uh, you're absolutely right, understanding the needs of our customers and providing them uh, the right products and the right channels uh, for them to access um, uh, finance is extremely important. And thank you for that uh, story as well. Uh, so um, with that, um, you guys know, and we have been talking uh, about this for a very long time, that women's empowerment is core to think as current and future strategy uh, to end poverty. Uh, it, it is extremely important to continue to tell these stories about um, the success that we are seeing uh, across the board and all of our subsidiaries. And in particular, when uh, the success is uh, breaking new ground. Uh, Finca Tajikistan is a network leader when it comes to uh, both reaching our target customers and empowering women. Uh, when I traveled to, uh, to Tajikistan um, and, uh, for their 20th anniversary last year, I had the great uh, pr privilege of meeting with a lot of um, our uh, female employees um, in a women forum, uh, but then also I had the opportunity to go to branches uh, and visit some of the customers that were um, a part of the uh, women club. So um, with that experience in mind, because it's still, uh, I still continue to play that 
um, uh, in my mind that uh, it, it was so uh, amazing to visit these customers and to hear their stories and how the Women's Club has changed their lives and provided the platform for them to uh, really learn from each other as well as uh, work with each other and uh, get to know uh, in uh, each other, uh, each other's businesses and contribute towards the success of each other's businesses. So with, with that, I have the privilege of um, introducing uh, Gulnaza Solievo, uh, who's our Women Inclusion uh, Program Manager with Finca Tajikistan. Gulnaza runs the Women's Club and is joining us today to uh, talk about how Women's Club got started and how it's impacting uh, women's lives and uh, the plans uh, for the future for the Women's Club. So, hello, Kulnaza, welcome. Hi, Zar. Hi. Um, perhaps, Kulnaza, we can start uh, with you telling us a little bit how the uh, Women's Club got started. Yes, sure. Thank you. So how we started, we uh, were thinking of ideas, how we can align with our strategy on diversity, inclusion and belonging. And the uh, uh, management team had decided to support uh, one of the vulnerable groups, women. So uh, we also we started a club firstly by conducting a survey to have uh, the needs and challenges uh, the women face. So identifying their needs and challenges, we uh, implemented developed women inclusion program. And uh, one part of our program is was a Finca Women Club. So we piloted this club in three branches. And after receiving good results, all the KPIs we set for this pilot period were reached and we saw the great interest from women and clients. So we decided to expand and implement this club in all our branches. In 26 branches, we have this club for now. That's great. Thank you, Gulnaza. It seems very important that you started by communication uh, with the customers and understanding their needs first. I imagine that the expansion of the program throughout the country was uh, the direct result of making uh, those connections with those customers that you talked to. Uh, what kind of benefit does the club offer uh, to its members? So our Finca Women Club offers uh, the members uh, both financial and non-financial services. So we provide them uh, uh, privileged in interest rates on loans and higher rates on deposits. We have implemented specific product for women on deposits and we provide each member with uh, cards, bank cards, which are identified as club cards and they have naming on the card. And also we provide them the non-financial uh, services as trainings, seminars, workshop, and uh, um, very important networking opportunity so that they could share with each other. Absolutely. Um, I have also witnessed um, some of these platforms for networking opportunities and other subsidiaries as well. And it's, it seems to have been working really, really well and uh, bringing uh, women together from all walks of life. So they are not only receiving financial education uh, from us, but then also their experience sharing with each other. So that's great. Uh, thank you, Gulnaza. Um, so what does this kind of support mean for women in Tajikistan? What are you hearing from them? Um, from what we see when we conduct all these uh, events, uh, women, uh, it is a very good opportunity for women as uh, these kind of trainings and uh, educational parts as uh, like digital financial literacy, because most of our clients women, are mostly in rural areas, so they have must not uh, customized to using, you know, cards and digital solutions. So we provide them this information and it's something new and uh, support for them to start using the services. And um, also on financial literacy, it uh, helps them to finding a way to earn for a living and uh, 
we have these business training, skills development trainings, uh, so that they can, as marketing and so, so they can uh, provide them opportunity to expand their customer base and uh, benefit to their businesses, you know. And um, as I said, networking opportunity is a great way for th for them to boost their self-confidence and also learn something from each other and from the experts we uh, invite for our events. Excellent. I, I saw that networking in action uh, when we met yes. with some of the Women's Club uh, members last year in the branches. Uh, that's great. So, um, Gulnaza, perhaps you can tell me who can be um, in this club and how many members do you currently have? Uh, our cl club is open for any women who are about the age of 18. It can be our clients, non-clients, our staff members. So we are open to everybody who is eager to learn something new. And uh, we pilot, uh, when we had a pilot, we started during the six months of pilot, we started with 300 uh, members. And now we are reaching on recent days, I have checked, we are reaching almost 4,000 uh, members. So we are growing and uh, we will continue working on that. That's real excellent progress. Well done. Um, so, how did you fund uh, this important initiative? Um, of course, uh, without the support of uh, externals, you know, partners, it would be um, much uh, harder. For us, so uh, from the start, we had support from Blue Orchard uh, to conduct this analysis, the survey I said about, so that we could understand the needs and challenges. And further, we um, have reached several partners to support us on this uh, non-financial services part. So we have DAI Global, which is funded by USAID. So they, um, during the pilot, they supported us for these trainings and other non-financial side. And also after the pilot, they saw that all the results we had. So they, we had a grant from them for uh, one year. So we have this grant for one year to support in trainings, in marketing, in uh, uh, conducting kids corners in our offices and educational videos. So we had this great support from our external partners. This is really great. Um, I know that Thinker International is uh, increasingly looking for grant funding uh, to uh, opportunities to be able to uh, subsidize a lot of uh, this kind of uh, projects. So um, I would uh, encourage um, for you guys to, to do reach out to us when you do have such product, uh, projects that you can uh, that you have identified local funding for or you need funding for please do reach out if there are opportunities we'll be happy to share those with you so what are your plans for the future uh, gulnaza for this club uh, thank you for sharing the information. Uh, for future, from our um, own perspective, uh, from Finca side, is we have pool of experts on financial literacy and digital financial literacy. We will continue providing this kind of support to to our members and also for for other skills development uh, trainings or other events initiatives. We are currently have uh, applied for several grants and we are looking. We are having several meetings with the, both USAID projects and others, which there are many opportunities in the market and we are trying to reach to help some kind of support. But with our means, we will continue working with our club members. And we in this year, we uh, are targeting and trying to reach uh, to have more members by uh, uh, almost 3000 uh, members uh, by the end of the year. Excellent. Uh, so, Gulnaza, uh, perhaps you can tell us in your own words uh, why you think initiatives like this, uh, like this one, are uh, important for our network and it can help us advance our mission and end poverty. Um, well, I think that it is very important because it uh, contributes to more inclusive and supportive, you know, environment and client support. And these initiatives help pe people build the skills uh, 
so that they could improve their financial situation and it could break, you know, the cycle of poverty. Uh, that, and uh, I would like to share one example from our one of the members recently had shared that after she was she has been very active, so she uh, has conduct, uh, participated in several of our training programs. So in recent ones, she shared that after your digital financial trainings, you know, I started using the mobile wallet, you know, and opened the deposit account. So she started uh, savings, you know, the savings culture she had uh, obtained to herself and she shared that certain amount of money she was able to save for herself so that she could uh, reach some of her goals and uh, some, you know, aims which was really inspiring to hear, hear her story. As well, recently on one event, one of our members shared that after our study tour, she has uh, returned home and uh, started uh, doing one of the handicraft pro products, which we have shown during this study tour. And now she is using, she's making this product and uh, has her customers who have already ordered these products and she is in, uh, generating some income, you know. It's very inspiring to hear these kind of feedbacks and results. Indeed, uh, they, they are inspiring and very heartwarming and it's really uh, makes you reflect on the kind of impact that such initiatives have in people's lives. So uh, thank you so much, Gulnaza, uh, for highlighting uh, the success that you have had in setting up this women's club and the impact that it's having um, in our customers' lives, uh, and especially in women's life, who usually are the most marginalized population in majority of countries where we are operating. So um, for uh, all of the other subsidiaries, just a uh, just couple of takeaways, uh, perhaps um, some things that we can uh, replicate in your subsidiaries and um, adapt uh, to use in your subsidiaries. Uh, first of all, before we start any initiative, really understanding the needs and the wants and the aspiration of our uh, uh, women customers to make sure whatever initiatives that we are putting together it is responding uh, to those needs. Uh, also providing opportunities for women um, or a platform for women uh, to network with each other, to learn from each other, uh, to share their stories um, with each other. I think that is such a great initiative that has really brought uh, different businesses together and women from different walks of life together. So uh, that's another opportunity. Um, setting up uh, supports like the Kids Corner, what an amazing idea uh, to make it easier for women to do business uh, with our subsidiaries so their kids are busy and learning something uh, in the Kids Corner while they are conducting uh, business in our subsidiaries. Um, but then also um, seeking grant funding opportunities and getting um, some skills training um, uh, the, around that as well because um, it is um, uh, initiatives like this that a lot of times there are so many partners that we, they want to fund and they are very passionate about uh, providing those opportunities for women. So a lot of this great work that Gulnaza was talking about uh, has been possible by funding opportunities that were identified with really great partners uh, on the ground in Tajikistan. And I know my colleague Keith is um, uh, now uh, working on those strategic uh, partnerships um, uh, 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 on our behalf uh, globally. So I would like to turn it over to him so he can talk a little bit about his plans and um, how we can strike those partnerships. Keith, over to you. Thank you so much, Thar and, uh, and Gulnaza. Uh, thanks for sharing that story of the Tajikistan Women's Club and the important role that partnerships uh, played to help uh, get that effort off the ground. I want to go off script for a moment and recognize one more time our network Finca star Grace Kaoma. And in honor of her, I'm wearing a Finca Zambia t-shirt, uh, which is promoting Finca Pamo, which is a digital savings product in Zambia, which I think also 
serves to highlight the importance of partnerships in a different way. In Zambia, we've been working very closely with the government and specifically the Ministry of Finance to promote outreach to rural areas. And Finca Pamo is one of the solutions that have been designed for that. But I wanna back up uh, just for a moment and begin with the proposition that we want to establish Finca as a leading authority on financial inclusion and poverty eradication. We wanna be a market leader within the microfinance industry. To be a leader, we must focus on our core competencies. We specialize in what we do well and partner with those who can complement us. Take the relationship between Finca Impact Finance and Finca International, for example. Finca Impact Finance partners with Finca International on much of the impact research that's done to measure how we are improving the lives of our clients. Finca International also supports our mission through their fundraising expertise, connecting us with powerful donors, such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Hilton Foundation, Jersey Overseas Aid, and many others. The value that Finca International delivers through research and fundraising allows us to focus on the delivery of financial products. We also have commercial partnerships with NGOs, with fintechs, mobile network operators, data analytics companies, banks, and insurance companies. This wide range of partners helps us to deliver financial education training, open new channels to reach our clients, develop new products to help clients manage their finances, reduce risk, on agricultural loans, develop credit scores to help us make good credit decisions. There are so many examples that we can share, but I think it really underlines the importance of partnering to leverage the reach that we can have through our branch networks and the many channels that we work through. In the future, we will be relying on partnerships with increasing frequency. We will be looking for partners to collaborate with us to help clients educate their children, increase clients' climate resilience, improve food security, and possibly address other public health needs. There's so much more that we can do, and we'll get there faster by partnering with organizations who have specialized skills in these different areas. Uganda, is one of the subsidiaries that is at the forefront of various partnerships. And our CEO, James Onyuda, will share with us some of the details coming up. Over to you, James. Thank you very much, Keith, for inviting me for this and having me. Good day, everyone. In this section, I will take a few minutes to showcase to you how we in Uganda have partnered with like-minded organizations that demonstrate a commitment to Finca's mission. And in by so doing, uh, have provided the much needed expertise that helps us expand our reach and impact to the communities we serve, while at the same time reducing our investment costs and time to market on these projects. I'll speak through existing partnerships, those in the pipeline, and also I'll share what we feel the future looks like in these partnerships. I've structured my short presentation on uh, around three things, digital transformation, international remittance and m and partners. But I'll end by talking about how social impact investors have supported us in Uganda in realizing these partnership potentials. Under the digital transformation, in Uganda, we were a late adopter to uh, digital financial services not only due to licensing restrictions, but also our own internal management project limitations. Today, we partner with Centenary Bank in Uganda, the second largest commercial bank here, to offer agency banking solutions. We also work with the United Bank of Africa for a co-branded Visa debit card and ATM installations at FinCA locations. And the third partnership in that journey has been with Eclectics International, who are a mobile financial services provider, 
linking our mobile app and USSD to the marketplace under a revenue share partnership. You may wonder why we entered into these types of relationships. We did so because one, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we leverage on the technology infrastructure these partners have, uh, hence reducing our capital, intensive capital deployment at the beginning. We also benefit from their countrywide market presence. These partners have already penetrated the Ugandan market and are serving deep down to the rural areas. It also helps us get a win-win solution uh, without having to invest much up front, but we do uh, bring in a share of revenue in these partnerships, but and further on, most importantly, reduce the cost down to the customer. The Digital Transformation Act partnerships I've talked about has seen us expand our services in agents to over 4,000 locations, We've seen a four times growth in deposit volumes for Visa account holding accounts. And our mobile financial services solution has driven our digital financial service used to over 70% of the bank transactions. On another front, we've learned so much and reached so many families through international remittances. Now, this is made possible with our partnerships with two commercial banks in this market. Diamond Trust Bank and Equity. Now, in this space, we are restricted by not only the, the inability to play in international remittance and forex markets, but also we are able to beat high entry barriers. For instance, MoneyGram in Uganda requires we do over 35,000 transactions before we get a direct license with them. But through these partnerships, we get a sub agency license agreement that has allowed us to reach over 100,000 transactions annually and touching over a half a million households in Uganda through international remittances. I want to talk about the mobile network operators. Amy knows a great opportunity for Finca subsidiaries worldwide to reach the masses within the countryside. Working with Amy know opens opportunities that would actually wouldn't be possible with our old way of uh, doing microfinance business. In Uganda, we are, although we are new to this space, we are working with Kunda and Railworks, who are our fintech partners. They bring on the IT platform uh, expertise, but also credit scoring experience to deliver financial services through the mobile network operators. And by that, we anticipate we will reach over half a million network agents in Uganda, funding their liquidity, and also reaching out to merchants, small and micro entrepreneurial merchants, uh, targeting over 300,000 in Uganda through partnership with NMOs. I want to spend my last few minutes talking about how social impact investors have supported us to achieve these partnerships. We are privileged. Uh, in the last few years in Uganda to work with so many impact investors. I will showcase three of them. The first one was World Savings and Retail Banking Institute. They supported us in 2022 to link up with Centenary Bank and deploy to over 4,500 agents. This was a unique partnership in our market and think of being a leader in structuring such a successful partnership that by the way, sees us have, have a net zero cost at the end of the day while serving customers at market rates, which is quite a unique uh, preposition. We've seen uh, other entities join up and structure such partnerships in Uganda based on our experience. Hilton Foundation, as mentioned by Keith in his, in his uh, submission, is another impact fund investors that is working with Opportunity International, it's working with Finca and with PHB, whose design experience helps us develop a product that will develop early childhood solutions in refugee communities, an area that Finca has no previous experience, and yet we expect to deliver excellent service. We also have, lastly but not least, the Bill and Melinda Gates program. This program aims to support Finca develop and test financial products for women. And we've seen that through these partnerships, 
We are getting VSLA financing experts. We are getting data analytics support uh, from this fund. They are also working with us through structured financing schemes, credit guarantee schemes, loss cover schemes, and also we are getting product development expertise as a subsidiary as we develop and provide services to women. These type of solutions not only help us meet our mission, but they are bringing added skills to us as a subsidiary that will feature, that will fuel our future success. I hope that you find these examples quite relevant and useful in a way that you can actually pick up on as we discuss a more broader strategic view of how Thinker can realize a holistic approach to ending poverty. Thank you for listening to me and I'm available and the team here as well are all available to answer any questions that you have and share our experiences with you. With that, I will invite Jeff to share his remarks and the next steps. Thank you so much.